Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to welcome you here this afternoon to Queensborough Community College mock gubernatorial debate. My name is Aung Mon. I'm the vice president of Queensborough Community College International Business Club which together with Queensboro Mock Trial Associations is hosting this debate. As we all know, just in a few days, voters across the nation will go to the polls on election day. Here in New York State, the people of the state of New York have to make, make a very important decisions. Who will be the next governor of the state of New York? It is therefore very important that we all focus on this campaign study the issues and the candidates so that we make the best decision we can when we vote for our next governor. For this reason, the International Business Club and the Mock Trial Associations are pleased to sponsor this Mock Governorial Debate. At this time, I'm pleased to introduce to you the Chairman of the Business Department at Queensborough Community College, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Jonas Felix. Thank you, thank you. I want to take this opportunity to welcome everybody to this event. This is our second debate. We had one two years ago. It was a great success, and hopefully this candidate's debate and the gubernatorial race, gubernatorial race will be a great success. I want to thank Professor Angela Poulakidis, if she would stand up in advance of the meeting for the international <laughs> hard work that she does with that group. I want to thank Professor Ted Rosen, the mock trial. And Professor Stephen Hamill, our mock trial assistant advisor. Thank you for coming. Uh, we have a surprise guest today to be part of the debate. Uh, but before we introduce our surprise guest, I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Diane Cole, president of Queensborough Community College, to go. Thank you. Dr. Fallick, and welcome. Welcome, students, faculty, staff. Uh, the most important privilege we have in the United States is to vote. And in order to do that, every citizen should be very much aware of the issues and the things to consider in selecting a candidate to represent you, your voice. I have to say we are extremely proud of our students who will represent points of view today and perspectives. And they've worked, I know, enormously hard and for a very long period of time to prepare, along with their faculty advisors, whom I also thank so much. It is not easy to venture into the public life. Public service is very important, but it's difficult. So you're going to hear, of course, from candidates from their perspective of issues. But we also have a surprise guest with us who has embodied what it means to be a strong representative of his community. He represented our district and the city council for many years, and last year he was elected to the New York State Assembly. He's been an extraordinary supporter of very important issues that are important to you, particularly education. So I'd like to welcome someone who survived this whole process of debates and, in fact, uh, public service. David Weprin, the Honorable David Weprin Assemblyman for Queens in Albany in the New York State Legislature. Thank you, uh, President Call, and uh, I know we're all anxious to hear the debate, and I'm actually going to be uh, participating uh, with the panel in the debate, so I'll be uh, hanging around for that, but so I'm not going to speak long, but I will um, emphasize one thing that is so important. Uh, when I was most of your ages, um, the voting age was 21. Uh, since then, it's been lowered to 18. And uh, statistically, I think there's been a fall off of those 18-year-olds um, uh, that have registered to vote and, uh, and actually voted in elections. And it's really important because the um, powers that be, the elected officials, the political scientists, the journalists actually analyze the data of the statistics of uh, registered voters and age groups. And uh, the reason uh, seniors have become such an important uh, political force in the city, state, and country is that statistically they vote in much larger numbers uh, than other groups. So it's very important of issues that you're concerned about as uh, young people, uh, 
issues uh, about college and uh, supporting great institutions like Queensborough Community College and the City University of New York, it's really so important that you exercise uh, that opportunity to vote. It really is um, something that many people in other countries uh, die for and fight for, and uh, it's not, uh, we take for granted uh, the right to vote, but uh, there are a lot of countries and a lot of places in the world where uh, citizens and non-citizens are not able uh, to participate in the uh, de democratic process of voting. So it uh, really is very important, and I really would uh, urge each of you, if you're not registered to vote, to register to vote when you can, and of course, if you are registered to vote, regardless of um, which party you're registered, that you come out to vote. Uh, I also actually would emphasize something that um, not everybody is as sensitive to, and that's actually registering with the political party. I actually am a Democrat. I'm registered with the Democratic Party. But even if you're a Republican or you want to, um, the two major parties, Democrat or Republican, it gives you an opportunity to have more of a say in the process. You can still vote in November for whoever you want, uh, but by becoming a registered voter with a party, you get to participate in the Democratic primary or the Republican primary, or if there are any other minor parties, the Conservative Party or Working Family Party or Independence Party, uh, it gives you more of an opportunity uh, to really participate early on. And uh, you'd be surprised, especially at a lot of the local elections, where the Democratic primary in a very Democratic area, or the Republican primary in a Republican area, really determines who the elected officials are. And generally, the turnout in primaries is only about 10% of the turnout, or maybe 20% of the turnout in the general election. So your vote even counts more uh, in a primary. So. Uh, if I can stress one thing, uh, the importance to vote and also um, the importance to register with the party, whether it be Democrat or Republican, uh, and to vote in that primary, and you can still vote in the general election because your vote then uh, is really uh, so much more significant uh, because there is a much lower turnout in the primary system. Um, I'm looking forward to participating in the debate. Um, I'd be happy to answer a couple of questions if that's okay. Anybody have any questions? No? Okay. Uh, I can give you that, my opinion. <laughs> Where do you stand on term limits? Where do I stand on term limits? Very good question. I actually, when I was in the city council for eight years, I was the first class that came in. Uh, we called us, ourselves the term limit babies because we had 38 out of 51 uh, new members of the city council because of the term limit law that went into effect with the election of 2001, where I got elected to the city council. Uh, I personally, uh, philosophically, are opposed to term limits because I think the voters should be able to decide how long someone should be in office. But having said that, I was very much opposed to what Mayor Bloomberg did uh, and some of my colleagues in the city council, or most of my colleagues in the city council, who voted to extend the third term legislatively, uh, which went against two public referendums. So I was actually one of the leaders against changing term limits uh, because it wasn't being done by referendum. I would support a referendum. There is a referendum on the ballot now. Uh, I think it's a little disingenuous of the mayor to now advocate for eight years when uh, he advocated before uh, so strongly to have a third term. There was an opportunity for the voters to still vote last time before the, the city council acted, uh, but it was kind of um, in the interest of, I guess, uh, the mayor and some of my former colleagues uh, who were concerned that the voters would not vote for the 12 years, so they did it on their own legislatively. I thought that was very wrong. I said that publicly, I fought against it, uh, but I would certainly not oppose a referendum uh, at the state level uh, to have uh, term limits, but um, I think it should be up to the voters. But the problem with having a limited term is that if you really like somebody and they're doing a good job, you don't have an opportunity to have that choice. But uh, I thought it was wrong to have done it legislatively, and um, I supported the public referendum. On taxes. Um, that, that's a very good question. Um, you know, taxes in some ways are a necessary evil. Uh, I do think we're overtaxed uh, here in New York City and New York State. Uh, we have to be competitive with other areas. Uh, 
We're still coming out of a recession, even though we're out of it technically. Uh, a lot of people are hurting. Unemployment is still hovering around 10%. So uh, I would advocate to um, not increase taxes now. Uh, you can't, as much as it's, uh, a lot of people would like to eliminate all taxes, uh, we really rely on the taxes, the revenue from the taxes, to provide the services that government provides uh, at the city level, the state level, to help fund uh, institutions like CUNY, uh, to pay uh, you know, for the school system, for teachers, to pay for police, for fire for sanitation, uh, for transportation. So we need that tax revenue. We can't eliminate it, but I don't think now is the time uh, to be raising taxes. How about um, the reinstatement of tax? Well, uh, the problem with that, that's also uh, very good questions here. Very um, the sales tax is the most regressive tax. It hurts disproportionately uh, poorer people or middle class people because everybody pays the same. So from a regressive point of view, it's not a good idea. I prefer progressive taxes. However, um, we had a very tough situation at the state level where we had a $9 billion deficit. We had to close that deficit. And as part of that package, we uh, reinstated um, the sales tax on clothing and shoes, um, which was eliminated a couple of years ago. But it was only a temporary uh, tax, and it's supposed to expire in three years. I did support that as part of an overall package to close the $9 billion deficit. But we didn't raise income taxes. Uh, we didn't raise uh, other broad-based taxes. But uh, it, was, it was part of a package that I supported, but on, on the condition that there be uh, an expiration, hopefully in three years, uh, we'll be in a better sh shape and it'll automatically expire without us doing anything. Talk about raising taxes and with the BP oil spill and the emphasis towards renewable energy, any possibility of perhaps looking for revenue from raising gasoline taxes? That's always a very big negative, especially upstate New York because um, in upstate and even in the suburbs, uh, people rely on their cars much more, and that's always a um, you know, very, very sensitive politically uh, tax. You know, New Jersey, um, I, I plead guilty that if I have to go uh, to New Jersey, I fill up on gas, because New Jersey is so much cheaper than New York, and it really has to do with the, uh, the taxes. So um, at this point, um, I probably would not support uh, a gasoline tax, but it's a question of what are the choices, and if we have another multi-billion dollar deficit, which we will, I mean, I think we have to consider all options. Yes? Backdoor borrowing. Backdoor uh, borrowing. That's actually something I uh, know a little bit about because um, not only, you know, did I chair the Finance Committee in the City Council, uh, I was an investment banker on Wall Street for over 20 years in municipal finance, so I was very much involved in uh, tax-exempt bond issues. Uh, what backdoor borrowing is basically is um, generally uh, gener general obligation bond issues, which means that uh, when a municipality floats a bond uh, to, for a public construction project, uh, general obligation generally require voter approval in a referendum. Uh, backdoor borrowing refers to um, ways that the city and state and uh, other states can um, get money for projects through borrowing without um, having to go to the voters or without um, having to impact their uh, debt limit because every municipality has a regulation about how much they're allowed to borrow you know, as a cap and they get around it. For example, in New York State, uh, there are a number of state agencies that issue bonds uh, that don't require voter approval and don't impact on the state's borrowing cap, but at the same time, that money is used for state purposes, like the uh, Empire State Development Corporation, which was used to be called the Urban Development Corporation, uh, like the State of New York Mortgage Agency, like the New York State Housing Finance Agency, uh, and like the Dormitory Authority of the State of New York, which actually builds uh, construction for CUNY and SUNY um, for not just for dormitories, it's called the Dormitory Authority, but they're basically in charge of uh, all construction uh, for the um, SUNY and CUNY system. So they call that backdoor borrowing because it's not general, I know it's a long about answer, but it's not the general obligation of the city or state. Uh, it doesn't go to the voters for voter approval, but it's used for purposes that benefit the public. 
What kind of debt? Sure. What kind of debt? Well, basically, um, infrastructure needs, uh, trans transportation needs, for example, um, for highway improvement and maintenance, for new highways, for old, for ma maintaining existing highways, uh, for water and sewer projects, uh, for construction of um, public facilities, whether they be convention centers or whether they be uh, colleges and universities. Basically, um, any need um, that the municipality has, is, but it's generally what we call um, capital needs, which are construction. You know, anything that, uh, there's expense and capital. Expense is money that you use for operating. Capital is money you use for construction-related projects. Last question. Excuse me, how do you feel about um, job creation? Since you know, all of us are students here, and after we graduate, the, the, the unemployment rate is so high. Yeah, it's close to 10%. Um, we have to create new jobs, um, there's no question. I think we have to expand uh, our industries uh, in the city and state, uh, which will help in employment. It'll also help in um, increasing the tax base. Traditionally, we relied on Wall Street, my former industry, uh, for too large a percentage of our city and state revenue. Wall Street had a couple of hiccups and, uh, and everybody, uh, you know, was hurt by that. So uh, one of the industries that we're expanding in New York City and state is the film industry. We've provided a number of tax credits at the city and state level, uh, which means that if a film wants to do a commercial or a, a TV show or, or a movie uh, in the city and state, they get tax benefits, and that gets us to compete with California and other locations that might have had the films or the TV shows. Uh, and that'll create new jobs, and that's already happening. It's, it's expanding significantly. We have um, three or four major new studios uh, in the city. You have uh, Steiner Studios in Brooklyn. It's a relatively new studio. It's 10 years old. We have Silver Cup Studios did a major expansion, and uh, Astoria Kaufman Studios right here in Queens. Uh, we have to do other industries. We have to compete with high tech, um, with, with other industries, and uh, create new jobs. I'd like to bring in the debaters. Please come on in, our reporters. Good afternoon. I'm William Janik. And I'm Helen Kwok. We would like to thank our Assemblyman Weprin for being here today. We're members of the Mock Trial Association and we would like to welcome you to today's debate. As has been said, Election Day is just two days away. And people of New York will make the most important decision electing the next governor of the state of New York. Today we are happy to bring you the two major candidates in the gubernatorial election who have agreed to be here today. In a one-on-one -on -one debate and to answer questions from a panel of journalists and to respond to questions from our audience. At this time, I would like to introduce the members of our distinguished panel of journalists who will present questions to the candidates. First, Elizabeth Lara of the QCC News. Owen Young of WQCC-TV. <laughs> Marilyn Rodriguez of the Queensborough Times. <laughs> Bandir of the QCC Radio. <laughs> He'll be in momentarily. Ang Man of the QCC Herald. And of course, our assemblyman. He'll be joining us in the panel of journalists today. Andrina Barnes will be joining us. She is the audience. Um, she'll be going around later for questions from the audience. Now, we would like to introduce our candidates. First, I'd like to introduce 
the candidate of the Republican Party, Carl Palladino. <laughs> Mr. Palladino is 64 years old and lives in Buffalo. He graduated from St. Bon Bonaventure University in 1968 and Syracuse University College of Law in 1971. He was, practicing, he was a practicing attorney in New York from 1972 through 1983. He retired as a captain from the United States Army Reserves in 1981. In 1983, he founded Ellicott Development Co., which manages more than 5 million square feet of office, retail, and residential space in Buffalo and elsewhere in upstate New York. He announces, he announced plans to seek the governorship in 2009. Please welcome Carl Paladino. I would like now, sorry. I would now like to announce the Democratic Party, um, Andrew Cuomo. Mr. Cuomo is 52 years old and lives in Mount Kisco. He graduated from the Fordham University with a BA in 1979, Albany Law School in 1982. He served as the Assistant United States Attorney in New York County in 1984. He practiced law in New York City and the firm Boutrick, Boutrick Balcone and Miller from 1985 through 1988. In 1986, he founded Housing Enterprise for Less Privileges. He served as the United States Secretary of Housing and Urban Development from 1997 through 2001. In 2002, he was a candidate for the New York State Governor. From 2003 to 2006, he was partner in the Island Capital Group. From 2007 through the present, he has been serving as a New York State At Attorney General. Please welcome Andrew Cuomo. I would now like to explain the format of today's debate. We'll begin with the opening statements, and each candidate will be permitted to make an opening statement of up to two minutes. Following the opening statements, our panel of journalists will pose questions to the candidates on an alternating basis. The candidate to whom the question will be posed to will have two minutes to answer. His opponent, his opponent will then have two minutes to respond. The next question will then be presented to the other candidate. After questions from the panel, members of the audience will be permitted to ask questions. Following the questions from the audience, each candidate will be permitted to make a closing statement of up to one minute. The candidates have met before the debate and flipped a coin. Mr. Paladino won the coin toss and has been elected to go first. Mr. Paladino, will you please make your opening statement? Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank the uh, moderators, our panel of journalists, uh, faculty, staff. Sir, pleasure for you to be here. Thank you very much. I'm not a career politician. I'm an accomplished businessman with a fresh face, which is sorely needed in Albany. My opponent, Mr. Cuomo, has been groomed for this job since day one. His father has given him the silver spoon for him to be standing here right now addressing you folks. He's not aware of what you go through day to day. I, on the other hand, have been there with you since day one, working hard to build the empire I have right now. I plan on making actions happen when I step foot into office if elected governor of New York. I plan on cutting taxes and spending as opposed to capping taxes. I want to review every department and agency of state government to evaluate efficiency, effectiveness, and necessity, and cut programs not benefiting you, the taxpayer. Also, things that need to be dealt with are cutting the state income tax 
and uh, to ensure that we keep businesses, such as many of you who have small businesses here or aspire to have small businesses, prosperous, to attract business, revenue, and most importantly, jobs for our community. Now, New York City is hit hard with this issue of unemployment. And trust me, I hear this, I know this. I have provided jobs through my work in real estate to many New Yorkers. Mr. Cuomo Mr. Palladino, please wrap up your has not comments. offered any jobs. Mr. Cuomo, would you please make your opening statement? Yes, I would. Thank you. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank the administration, the staff of Queensborough Community College for hosting this wonderful event today. I'm very glad at the large turnout we have today. Uh, I also want to thank the supporters of my campaign and most importantly, the wonderful peoples of New York here today. So why am I here today? Why am I here standing in front of you today? I'm here for the best interests of the people of New York. The people of New York deserve a government that's ready to roll up their sleeves and work tirelessly to develop healthcare, employment, business, and educational opportunities for the people, regardless of the current economic situation. And I do recognize that we are going through a very rough patch right now, but we have proven to the world time and time again as the Empire State of New York, we can come back. With a proven and prudent leadership in place, I assure you, without a doubt, that we will certainly come back, and we will come back stronger than ever. The reason why I am strongly believing that we can come back is because the people of New York are amongst the hardest working individuals in the United States of America. The people of New York deserve a government that works for a change, not a government that's paralyzed by partisan politics and lack of ethical standards. We need someone tough to handle and turn around the chronic dysfunction and chronic corruption in Albany. A major overhaul needs to be conducted and we all need to work together. We need to work together to reorganize, Cuomo, please conclude your revitalize statement. and re-energize the structure of government, and most importantly, restore the confidence in the people. And how are we gonna do this? Raising taxes is certainly <clears throat> not the issue. Thank you, Mr. Cuomo. Thank you. Now we'd like to begin with the questions. Our first question is to Mr. Cuomo, and is from Ms. Lara. Thank you. First, I would like to thank you both for having me here. I am delighted to be here. Mr. Cuomo, Albany politicians have given us the highest state and local government spending in the nation. That puts New York at a competitive disadvantage, not only with other states, but with much of the world as well. What are your plans for restoring order and our fiscal house. Thank you, Ms. Laura. Uh, frankly, I'm very glad that you asked this question. Uh, we must get our state's fiscal house in order by imposing a tax cap on spending, and most importantly, freezing state public employees as part of a one-year emergency plan. We must also eliminate mandates that make it possible for school districts and localities to contain costs. Next, I ask you, how many governments do you think are in the state of New York? 10, 20, 100? No, 10,561 individual state governments in the state of New York. And that's including the water districts, the sewer districts, the towns, the counties. And guess who's paying this? You, me the taxpayers are fronting this bill. And uh, is this fair? Is this fair for the residents of New York? I don't believe so. In order to bring New York's fiscal conditions back, we need to shrink the size of government because government is too big, too expensive, and too many. Now, we need to take a lesson from the private sector. 
when the economy is down, companies reduce their costs. We need to take that same exercise and apply that to government now. We need to find the synergies. We need to find the efficiencies in government. And we need to cut the waste and inefficiency. Thank you. Mr. Palladino, would you like to make a comment? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yes, I'd like to make a comment. I've heard that song many times over and over. Uh, you should sell that on iTunes and make a profit. It's the same song with no meaning. He has not provided you with any answers to fixing the problem. All he's done is state the obvious. We have issues in our fiscal house. Now, what is the key component to attacking these issues? Common sense, right? If we spend too much, what do we do? We stop spending. Spending cuts are an important issue for us. Medicaid is the number one out of control cost facing New York. $54 billion was spent on Medicaid last year, by far the highest in the US. More than double of California. Combining California and Texas, number two and three respectively, is nowhere near what we spend. That needs to be addressed. We need good firm management that has not been provided by the Democratic Party and neither will be provided by Mr. Cuomo. I am not influenced by special interests as most of these politicians are. They don't care about your every concern and needs. Let's be real here, folks. They care about their special interests and advancing to the next election to make it to office and secure their jobs. The only jobs I want to secure are your jobs now and in the future. Education mandates coming from Albany are ridiculous. A faceless bureaucratic entity telling you what to do in your school district is wrong. Because why? They are not held accountable for their actions. This is not how I was raised when I served my country's military as an officer. Accountability is number one with all our soldiers, as is with all our Mr. citizens Paladino. and our government. Thank you, Mr. Paladino. Our next question will be stated to Mr. Paladino from Mr. Yun. Good afternoon, Dr. Greensboro Community College, Mr. Paladino, Mr. Cuomo, thank you for having me here. Mr. Paladino, unemployment in New York State is among the worst in the country, and the future outlook for the creation of new jobs is uncertain. If elected governor of New York, how will you propose we remedy this issue? That's a great question, Mr. Yun. Thank you very much. And that is a question that is on the mind of all the voters here today. We need jobs. Many of you here will be graduating soon or after completing four years in the CUNY system or wherever you plan on going, private or public, you will seek a job to support your future, to ensure that each and every one of you has a family one day and can feed your children, put them through school, put a roof over their heads, but yet, my opponent's side has not given you any solutions to this problem. I plan on doing so as I am qualified since I have created jobs for New Yorkers during my time as business developer in this state across 40 years of work. My father came to this country as an immigrant to Buffalo. And back then, FDR had a program civilian conservation program, which ensured the readiness and assessed the skills of our workers to ensure we produce the best workforce needed for a prosperous economy. I plan on doing so with the Dignity Corps. Those currently on unemployment and on welfare will be assessed, will be given an opportunity to get off these programs if they can, if they are able to do so. I will provide them with a program which will need to be done and performed in order for them to receive checks in the future. This will help assess your skills, values, and among other things, prepare you to step out into the workforce. Prepare, because many of you feel as if, am I qualified in today's day and age for jobs? And that is a fear and concern I share with you all, because technology is advancing. 
And the requirements now for jobs are very high. Today, our bachelor is a master's degree. The bachelor's word and associate was 10, 20 years ago. Folks, I am with you on this issue and I want to help you to ensure that you are ready to tackle any obstacles you, that are in your way to get a job today. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Cuomo, would you like to respond to that? Yes, I would. Thank you. Look, the people of New York are the economic engine of this state. We must make New York the jobs capital again and get unemployed New Yorkers back to work. And how can we do this? How can we incentivize businesses to invest in New York and invest in the hiring of the brightest and best New Yorkers of the state? As part of my plan, I propose that we give businesses a tax credit of $3,000 for each unemployed New Yorker that is hired. Now look, we have to remember, we are the Empire State of New York, the best and brightest minds and entrepreneurs call New York home. We have to figure out a way how to incentivize and fund entrepreneurs, incentivizing and funding small businesses. After all, the largest employer, aside from financial services in the state of New York, are entrepreneurs, small businesses. Look, banks don't care about small business. After all, they perceive the risk to be too high. I don't think the risk is too high. Look around you. Look at the person who is sitting right next to you. We are the Empire State. We have the infrastructure in place, we have the human capital in place, and we have the inspiration, drive, and passion to go to the next level. All we need is the right leadership. We need to implement a platform that will free up capital for entrepreneurs that have the right ideas. I care about the people of New York and these ideas, and I, Andrew Cuomo, I value the ideas of our bustling entrepreneurs in this state. And I believe in backing small business and investing in small businesses in the state. Uh, may I comment to that, please? Thank you. Uh, your, your, your involvement in HUD with pushing subprime mortgages with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, leading to our current housing bubble, the recession. Mr. Paladino. You haven't addressed that. <laughs> Our next question is to Mr. Cuomo from Ms. Rodriguez. Good afternoon to the both of you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Mr. Cuomo, skyrocketing health care costs are drowning families, businesses, and governments in red ink, leaving millions priced out of the market and without coverage. Here in New York, we pay more health care than most other states, and our Medicaid is by far the most expensive in the nation. <clears throat> As governor, please explain how you would reverse this upward trend in health care and Medicaid costs. Additionally, what is your stance on President Obama's recently passed health care plan? Thank you, Ms. Rodriguez. Listen, health care in New York is certainly an issue that we have to solve. We need to make health care affordable and available for every single individual in this state. We have an obligation to provide the best health care services possible and to be in the best interests of the people. Without the proper health care systems in place, how can we bring the best and brightest of New York to maintain proper standards? I certainly agree with President Obama. He is doing a great job with his health care plan, and it is a step in the right direction. However, Plans aren't necessarily perfect. However, he is doing an excellent job in providing health care. The main issue here that is impeding New Yorkers from receiving health care is the fraud, the corruption, the inefficiencies. We need to work feverishly to stamp out the corruption, to stamp out the fraud in the health care industry. And who is the best candidate to provide this solution to the people. Andrew Cuomo, me. I have proven to the people of the state of New York as your attorney general that I have gone through the tough fights against corrupt bankers, 
corrupt politicians on both sides of the aisle. As part of Please my Medicare fraud comments, unit, Mr. Cuomo. thank you. As part of my Medicare fraud unit, I successfully convicted 500 convictions, which have yielded 135 million dollars back to the taxpayers, and that's what I plan to do as governor of New York. Thank you, Mr. Cuomo. Mr. Palladino, would you like to respond? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Cuomo, thank you for your comments. You've accomplished two things with them. One, you've had people leave the uh, auditorium right now. And uh, second, you've uh, raised my blood pressure with your uh, farce comments. Of course you fought corruption. Anyone that stood in your way, you, uh, you embraced, ethically challenged Charlie Rangel. After all the facts are out of what he's done, and the list goes on, I could talk about that, but I'm not here to slander you. That will come later. <laughs> now we're addressing an important issue here, uh, health care. We pay more for health care and Medicaid than any other state in the U.S. Now, uh, I have a friend who has a child that goes to the school. Now, I, I'm not calling them a child in case they're here. I apologize, but you're all adults because you can't vote. So. But uh, if they're telling me how there's a table here set up for health care. Uh, once a week, maybe twice a week, they have a booth set up here, I think in this building, I'm not sure, uh, for health care. Now, what I've been told is that many people don't qualify because their parents might make too much money, their income is too high, when it really isn't. And they end up having to pay premiums that are out the roof. This is atrocious. Now imagine a day comes when you are forced to buy Medicare. Medicaid, you, you're forced to buy into it. Is this not wrong? Well, as an attorney, I've studied at Syracuse Law, and I know a little thing or two about the Constitution. And Obamacare Thank you, Mr. is against the Constitution. Forcing you to buy in the marketplace Mr. Paladino, a service or thank product you. is against the law. And I next will question file a federal lawsuit along with many other states to ensure these provisions are met. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Paladino, please. The next question is from Mr. Deer. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very pleased to be here today. My question will be directed to Mr. Palladino. President Obama ran for office on the platform of change. If you are elected governor of the state of New York, what types of change do you plan on delivering to inspire the residents of the Empire State and to instill in them hope for the future? Thank you, Mr. Deere. I, my, my, what I plan on changing is what Mr. Obama has changed, therefore reversing the bad. On my first day uh, as governor of New York, I will demand a joint session of the state legislature be scheduled immediately. At this session, I will go over broad steps to close New York's budget gap and provide tax relief to all you New Yorkers. That day, I will tell lawmakers that New York is in a financial state of crisis and that this crisis proves that the legislature is not up to the challenge of cutting the budget. Clearly, the spending habits of our ruling class are the road to ruin. Deep spending cuts, while difficult, are absolutely necessary. We must cut spending, not cap spending, as my opponent keeps preaching. Capping spending will not solve the problem, because if I spent $500 today, but I decide to spend only $300 tomorrow, I'm still spending way out of my budget. We need to cut spending where spending needs to be cut, reviewing every department, removing any earmarks, any spending that is unnecessary, that isn't using your taxpayer money efficiently, will be stopped immediately. We need someone who is versed and knowledge in the business world. I am, as I've been in it for most of my life, as I've worked in it, producing jobs, producing revenue. My client has never worked a day in his life. Everything has come to him. How would he know? Thank you, Mr. Paladino. How would he know? Would you like to respond to that, Mr. Cuomo? Yes, I would, thank you. Look, I understand Mr. Palladino is angry. <laughs> the people of New York are very angry. Mayor Bloomberg is angry. Look, there's one of two things we can do here. One, we can celebrate our anger, drink some tea, and create an anger party. Or two, it's funny, right? Or two, we can take that anger, 
harness it and use it, use our energy, all the energy we can to develop a solution for these issues. There's a lot of talk that's going on. But as your Attorney General, I have fought the tough fights. The people of New York are amongst the, the hard, most hard working individuals in the United States of America, and they deserve a government that respects their decisions. The people in New York deserve a government that has a proper leadership in place. The people of New York deserve a government that's willing to make drastic changes to New York for the 21st century. We need drastic change in government now. We need to restore the confidence of the people. After all, what's the purpose of government anyway? So how do we restore this trust? We must make the Empire State the state it once was, the, the place that people would come to live, invest money in, and get more jobs. Thank you, Mr. Cuomo. Thank you. Um, may, may I please respond to that real quick? 30 seconds. May I please respond? No. Uh, but Mr. Palladino. The angry, anger party. Mr. Palladino. Cheap shots will not take any effect. Mr. Palladino. Of course I'm angry. The people are angry. Next what question. Done, your actions, and I will not stand by. Mr. Palladino. Unless you ruin my state and my country. We will fight. Our next question is to Mr. Cuomo from Mr. Mon. I'm grateful for being here. Um, I would like to, first of all, I would like to thank our QCC students, faculty member, president of QCC, and our respective assembly member. And the, my question is, what role should New York State play in creating an attractive climate for international business and international investment? What strategies or policies would you suggest for creating a favorable climate and increase international investments in New York State? Thank you. New York is the financial capital of the world. Millions of countries, millions of nations, and companies rely on the services of New York. We need to ensure that New York continues to be superior. We need to ensure that New York has the best environment to harness global investment. So how can we do this? How can we attract business to our state? How can we employ the people of New York again? We must open the floodgates and attract businesses to invest in our state. The answer is not taxes. We cannot drive away businesses by imposing taxes. We must institute a tax credit and a plethora of incentives for businesses within the state. Right now, government and the current legis legislation in place is hindering investment. We need to keep a property tax cap to inspire investment and most importantly, inspire public confidence. And I believe I am the right candidate to encourage investment in this great state and I look forward to serving the people of New York. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cuomo. Would you like to respond to that? Probably yes, I definitely would, thank you. Let's, let's be real here. We are pushing businesses away to countries like Dubai, to China, India, anywhere where they provide tax incentives and tax breaks to these businesses because we are taxing them too much here in New York. The property tax, the MTA tax, just throw all these taxes on our businesses. They'll want to stay there because we all take in class here before Business 101. What is the key goal of a business? Can anyone answer that please? Profit. profit, exactly. How can you make profit if the government's taking all your money? We need to cut taxes, remove these taxes. Taxes that you and your party sanction and impose on our businesses. They're driving them away. Outsourcing to different countries for cheaper labor. Will this help you get a job? How will this draw foreign investment when we can't even domestically take care of our people, our businesses? Why would foreign investment want to come in here? The dollar is going to weaken. But New York has that power to ensure that our economy flourishes in this time of crisis. I'm angry. I'm fed up. But emotions aren't the only thing propelling me to make changes in our government. It's knowing that we were once great and will be great again. If we take actions for it, 
and are accountable for our actions Thank you, Mr. and fix Paladino. what's wrong with New York. Our next question will be stated from our Assemblyman Weprin. Uh, I'll start, to, well, I'll, I'll ask both of you to uh, answer this question. Starting with Paladino, please, Mr. Paladino. I'll start with Mr. Paladino. Uh, Mr. Paladino, you, uh, you mentioned specifically uh, earmarks uh, that you think are, are bad. You can't hear Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Palladino, the uh, last two governors uh, were known to have um, a, a so-called uh, love-hate relationship with the state legislature. They uh, went out of their way, and I'm referring to Governor Patterson and uh, Governor Spitzer before that, uh, would often um, go into legislative districts and, uh, and bash individual legislators rather than trying to work with them uh, to accomplish certain goals. Uh, what will you do uh, to improve your relationship with the legislature? Thank you, Sami Mwabram. I appreciate that question. Well, you're right, sir. Uh, Mr. Patterson and Mr. Spitzer went out of their way to bash things. This is true. Now, uh, I won't get into the details of that, but we know their ethics aren't where they need to be. We all follow the news. We know this. So, of course, I will do better than them to address these issues and to encourage bipartisan working and environment in the state legislature. We need to work together as a team. We need to wipe out corruption, and I mean all corruption, not just corruption that stands in our way, selectively choosing who is wrong and who's right when the evidence is in front of us. I believe by ridding our state legislature of poison, of this venom, of immorality, we can function and properly maintain and establish jobs lower taxes, and provide a better living condition for you New Yorkers. Mr. Cuomo, can you comment on uh, how you would uh, work uh, constructively uh, with the state legislature? Sure, thank you very much. Look, my goal is to restore the honor and integrity in government, but most importantly, empower the people of New York and stamp out the corruption that plagues our state. It's not gonna be easy. It will be a very tough fight, but the good news is, is that I'm ready to take it on, like I have done as your Attorney General, for almost four years where I battled head-to-head -head against special interests, corporate bankers on Wall Street, politicians on both sides of the aisle. Not only did I fight against these corrupt institutions, I won on behalf of the people. Now that feeling, doesn't even touch the fact that I returned and recovered over $135 million back to the taxpayers of New York. I know we can turn this state around. We're going to have to be strong, but we're also going to have to be smart and work together. My message is simple, and I'm sure you know the choice is clear. Look what I've done as your Attorney General and imagine the possibilities, imagine the opportunities that I could bring to this state as your governor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cuomo. Our next question will be towards Mr. Paladino from Ms. Laura. Mr. Paladino, what is your view on continuing the MTA commuter tax? Thank you very much, Ms. Laura. Uh, I'm just going to speak on this one. As someone who's ridden on the MTA uh, trains, I've visited here before. And can you hear me? Because this is an important issue. The MTA system right now needs to be destroyed and rebuilt. It is a shame. It is, it is the least transparent entity here. It is treated as if it's a luxury for you when it is a service provided to you by your hard-earned, tax-paid money. You are going to pay more and more money to get less and less service. Many of you seem to be young, about 18, 19, 
20. And uh, weekends are great times to go party, I'm sure. And uh, the trains are probably running inefficiently at those times, right? Poor service. This is ruining your weekend when you've worked so hard for it, I'm sure, studying all week. <laughs> so I'm with you on that. That's, that's wrong. But I just, seriously, though, this is not only with your leisure time. What does the MTA really perform? Its, it's, it's primary duty is to ensure businesses run smoothly. Now, it's not saying to tax businesses with an MTA tax. Thank because, you, Mr. Paladino. Because some businesses don't use the MTA. So a, a waiter in Long Island doesn't need the MTA to go out Mr. there. Paladino, He'd be driving thank out there. you. His traffic isn't bad like in the Grand Central. Would you like to respond to that, Mr. Paladino? Fix Cuomo. the MTA. Yes, I would. Thank you. Fix I the MTA. You. Look, <laughs> we all know what the MTA is, right? I mean, honestly, look, we use the MTA to get to point A to point B. And I'm going to ask this question to the beautiful people in the audience here. <laughs> How do you feel about the MTA? Has the MTA provided the service up to your standards? Has it? No. It hasn't. <laughs> the MTA, the buses, the trains, Long Island Railroad, Metro North, these are all integral services of the state of New York. The people of New York depend on these services every single day. We owe it to the people to make MTA more reliable. You would all agree on that, right? Yeah. Of course. We need to cut down spending at the MTA. The MTA is too large, it's too big, and it needs to be cut down. There are too many sub-agencies in the MTA that need to be cut down, and the good news is, is that we can do this. We have a solution for this issue, and I don't want New Yorkers to be paying these increases. And how am I going to stop this corruption in the MTA? I'm going to cut down all that excess spending. I'm going to be meeting with the MTA Please line by line comments, and Mr. saying, Cuomo. is this spending necessary? No, it's not. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cuomo. Our next question is to Mr. Cuomo from Mr. Young. Mr. Cuomo, the expected projected budgets for the next fiscal year contain significant cuts to the public higher education. What do you say to the many young people and their families who are about to graduate high school and are anticipating studying at public colleges in New York, and to those students who are currently enrolled in such colleges? Thank you. Every single generation has its own challenge. And at this point, we're going through a very large challenge now. Though the issue is, is that every single generation has to step up to the plate and meet these challenges. In this case, I vow to firmly support the young people of New York, the future leaders of New York, and I strongly back the people. We need to rid the excess in the government. This is integral for the students sitting in this room. And how are we going to do it? It's going to be a very tough fight. But as your Attorney General, I have shown you that I could take on this tough battle. And that's exactly what I'll do as your governor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cuomo. Mr. Palladino, would you like to respond? Yeah, yes, yes. I'm sorry, guys. I just, uh, I've seen Jersey Shore and Paul E.D. has about the same amount of gel in his hair. So, uh, I, I wish I had some hair. I can't be uh... But no, but seriously, I had to loosen up the, the, the mood here, the environment. Because school is important. And when discussing this topic, it really puts me in a, in a tough place because Education is what's going to allow us to compete in the global market. We have other countries with academic standards that far exceed us right now. Yet we spend more on education, but where does that money go? Obviously, not towards educational standards. Now, I plan on raising this, this standard, this bar, to where it should be, to where I believe you will all be successful in the future. Uh, I would like to create educational options 
and uh, extend the school year. And uh, this might not be popular with some, but uh, Thank you, Mr. a little Paladino. sacrifice, I know you don't like that answer, but a little sacrifice <laughs> will go a long way in ensuring our prosperity in this country. Thank you, Mr. Paladino. And the global economy. Our next question will be presented to Mr. Paladino from Mr. Rodriguez. Mr. Paladino, what in your background prepares you to be the next governor? I'm sorry, I was distracted again. What would you say? <laughs> what in your background prepares you to be the next governor? Um, I'm not trying to brag here, but I'm trying to get a point across to most of you here that don't know much about me because I am a fresh face here. I'm not a career politician. I'm a Buffalo native my whole life, born and raised in New York, in Buffalo. So I, I know the community very well. Uh, I practice law at Syracuse University and across 40 years in private business, I built a real estate development company which in even the most uh, difficult economic periods has provided jobs and has been the only private company building in Buffalo. Today, I directly employ hundreds of workers and provide work to thousands across the state of New York. My company controls a half a billion in assets, probably more than our New York State budget has to play with. Why, you may ask? Because of mismanagement of these funds. Now, this is something that is a dire issue and needs to be addressed by the most qualified person. And I believe that I am so fit to do what needs to be done to restore our economy in New York. Thank you, Mr. Paladino. <laughs> Mr. Cuomo, would you like to respond to that? Yes, I would, thank you. As a dedicated and longtime public servant, I have proven that I'm fully willing and able, and most importantly, I'm not afraid to take on the special interests. I know this government, and I can restore the government of New York to a functioning system where we can solve issues in a smart way. As a dedicated public servant of this state, I understand government, and I understand the marketplace. My fight against government fraud in this state is unparalleled. My fight in this state is unprecedented. I've put an end to undeserved perks that have come at the expense of you, the taxpayers. As Attorney General of your state for four years, I continue to reform the bad practices that are corrupting our state. We have to end rampant conflicts of interest Thank you, between Mr. corporations Cuomo. and the state. Our next question is directed to Mr. Cuomo from Mr. Deere. Mr. Cuomo, what is your view on alternative energy and how would you support the development of such energy in the state of New York? Thank you, Mr. Deere. It's a very uh, good question. Look, we can't depend on foreign sources for the vitality of New York. If we want to dominate the global marketplace, what do we have to do? We have to incentivize entrepreneurs to develop green energy sources to save money, monies for the residents of New York. I applaud Mr. Obama's aggressive initiatives towards the green energy industry. We need to increase investment and implementation of these energy sources to lessen the dependence on foreign oil. We need to investigate, develop, and implement our resources to increase investment in wind farms, biofuel, wind energy, and hydroelectric sources of energy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cuomo. Mr. Palladino, would you like to respond? Yes, please. Three words. 
Drill, baby, drill. <laughs> I am in favor of drilling at the Marcellus Shale deposit for its energy resources because not only will this provide us with domestically provided energy, but it will create jobs for many of you graduating here soon. Now, while many other states, such as Ohio and Pennsylvania, are already a couple steps ahead of us in this field, and they're looking at us and laughing. And uh, I laugh back at them because LeBron James left Cleveland, so take that, Ohio. And uh, we need to ensure that we are not the laughing stock of our nation, that we are the front runner, the leader. And by drilling, we will ensure that most of you have jobs to provide your family with the sustenance it needs, with the education your children will need one day when they attend college, because costs are too high. Thank you, Mr. Paladino. And I will ensure that this money is managed wisely. Thank you, Mr. Paladino. Next question from Mr. Mon. Questions to Mr. Paladino. In light of the current federal immigration policy, do you think that continued immigration is good for New York? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I believe legal immigration is good for New York. New York is a melting pot. We have all ethnicities, such as this room as an example. All ethnicities, different backgrounds, different cultures, come here to ensure that we're fused from the greatest, from all parts of the world. That's the beauty of New York. Now, illegal immigration is something I am strongly in support of placing sanctions to ensure that we do not have illegals coming into our state, our country, and taking away rights and benefits that belong to you, the citizens, who deserve it as Americans. Now, we have to our north, Canada, we share a border with Canada. Now to prevent the, the illegal Celine Dion's from coming into our state, into our country, is a goal I plan on pursuing. How would you feel if one day you are out, you get injured? Someone calls the ambulance and the ambulance is not responding you, to you Mr. right Paladino. away. They're going to someone who is getting that care, who is Thank not you, entitled to that care. Would you like to respond to that? Because they not pay the taxes that you pay. Yes, they would. Thank wrong. you. That is wrong. That is wrong. Federal immigration is a problem that we need to address. However, at the same time, we have to respect the fact that New York is a very, very diverse state. Look around the room. Look at your neighbor. Everyone is from a different part of the world, and we have to respect that. Now, right? we can't keep on implementing the same policies that are going to hamper the talent from coming into this state. We have to be liberal. New York is so diverse, there are more than millions of different cultures that occupy this state. Irregardless of ethnicity, race, gender, creed, sexual orientation, we should not deny the right of being a New Yorker. I'm a New Yorker, you're a New Yorker, we're all New Yorkers. Let's work together to solve these issues. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is to Mr. Cuomo. For Ms. Laura. Mr. Cuomo, there has been a lot of discussion in regard to the allocation of federal anti-terrorism funds among the states. How do you intend to ensure that New York gets its fair share of all federal anti-terrorist funds to protect the people of the state? Thank you very much, Ms. Laura. Look, in light of recent events, we must make safety the number one priority for every single individual, every single family in the state of New York. Safety and the well-being of New Yorkers is an integral part of restoring confidence and most importantly, restoring the trust of the people of New York. 
When I am elected governor, I will work extremely hard to ensure that New Yorkers receive their fair share of the allocation of the federal anti-terrorism funds. As your Attorney General, I have been working very hard with this state to ensure that every single New Yorker receives every single vital resource for the people. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cuomo. Mr. Palladino, would you like to respond? Yes, I would. Why is Minnesota receiving more anti-terrorism funding per capita than New York? Is the Mall of America that vital to our nation? New York has been faced with real threats, many of which you all know personally. 9-11 is no joke. How do you frown upon this and send money to Minnesota when we need it? We've had repeated attempts. In Times Square, two people with vans trying to bomb, attack us, these cowards. And yet we want to allocate money more towards other states that aren't in the position of vulnerability as New York is? This is ridiculous. Mr. Obama cut budget funding to us. Your party leader, our president, this, I'm, I'm, the anger party is here. This is what I'm angry about. Thank you, Mr. Palladino. We need to ensure that all of you can take your children out and be safe and not worry and not fear when walking the streets of New York. Ridiculous. Would you like to respond to that? Sure. I have a question for you, Mr. Paladino. Do you have the temperament to work with the people of New York? Being governor of the state requires intelligence, experience. I have been your attorney general. The attorney general of the state is the legal enforcer of the state. What's my job? I have been battling against corruption. I have been battling against the special interests. And I've proven to the state of New York that I'm capable of doing this. There are a lot of voices. There's a lot of talk. But there's very few actions and solutions that, I can, that we can deliver. Next question is to Mr. Palladino from Mr. Young. Mr. Palladino. If you had one question to ask your opponent, what would it be? The question I've been waiting for. <laughs> well, quite frankly, I don't think you have the guts to answer direct questions regarding the mistakes you made at HUD in pushing a subprime mortgage scheme that cost taxpayers $2.4 trillion and cost most New Yorkers the value of their 401k. I don't think you have the guts to answer questions about why you embraced, ethically challenged Charlie Rangel while pledging to clean up corruption, as is your motto. And I don't think you have the guts to defend why some were prosecuted in the Hevesy pension scandal, while others, including many of your key supporters, were not. So, Mr. Cuomo, for the first time in your life, be a man. Don't hide behind your daddy's coattails even though he pulled strings to advance your career every step of the way. Give us the answers that we want, the truth. Thank you, Mr. Paladino. Would you like to respond to that? Sure. Look, it's obvious that my competitor over here does not have the temperament for the people of New York. Being the Governor of the state of New York requires you to collectively work together as opposed to fighting. We are the people of New York, and we need to work together for solutions that make a difference and make sense. I have worked in government as your attorney general, and I've worked at the Department of Housing and Urban Development to ensure that housing is affordable. Former President Clinton stepped up and asked me to join him.
And I said, great, how can I help affordability of housing on a federal level? And best part is, is that we shrunk the size of HUD. This saved money for every single taxpayer, That's a lie. not in New York, but in the whole United States. Thank you, Mr. Cuomo. It's a bold-faced lie. Our next question is to Mr. Cuomo from Ms. Rodriguez. Mr. Cuomo, much has been said of the current political dysfunction in Albany. How would you remedy this condition? Thank you, Ms. Rodriguez. Look, let's face it. This is a serious issue. The Empire State is being hindered from this corruption. The, the best part is, is that there is a solution for this corruption. There is a solution that will help stamp out the plague in our government. And frankly, I'm angry too. And you should be too. Because this is your taxpayer dollars that are being used to fund lavish lifestyles that shouldn't be funded. You know, I'm disgusted. Frankly, I feel it more than most. You know, we need to work very hard at cleaning up Albany. And as your Attorney General, I feel it more profoundly than most because I've seen it up close and personal. I used to walk into the capital of Albany, and I used to love walking into the capital. Frankly, I'm very disgusted. Thank you, Mr. Cuomo. Thank you. May I please respond to that real quick? Um, yes. Thank you Go very ahead. much. Uh, you were talking about uh, fighting corruption. You were talking about the lavish lifestyle that many of these leave. Uh, would you please uh, tell the audience about uh, Mr. Farkas giving you $1.2 million upon leaving your position at HUD? and over $900,000 in campaign donations. After he was caught stealing $7.6 million in HUD funds that was supposed to be used for maintenance of housing for poor people. Now this is quite typical in politics. Take from the poor, give to the rich. They want to widen that gap that social classes, there's going to be the really hard working, the really poor, and the really rich. And the working class, the middle class, is being wiped out by the fraud in politics represented by the incumbent office. Thank you, Mr. Palladino. I plan on, may I please uh, finish the rest of my statement? I haven't addressed everything You yet. have 10 seconds. No. What, what I plan on doing is wiping Albany of this corruption. And we have widespread, if you go on my website, paladinoforthepeople.com, you will see many of the facts. Thank you, Mr. There. Paladino. Visit that before the election so you know the truth. <laughs> Our next question for Mr. Rodriguez. I mean, Mr. Young. Wait. <clears throat> to Mr. Paladino for Mr. Deer. Thank you. Mr. Palladino, how would you encourage the development of new business in New York State, given many complex state laws and regulations that apply to establishing and running a business in New York State? I, I, thank you very much, Mr. Deer. That is a key topic that my campaign has dealt with while on the trail for the past year or so. I've been to many parts of New York on my trail, and I hear the same, same questions. Mr. Palladino, the economy is too rough right now. Banks won't give me loans. I don't have the funds, the sufficient funds to start a business. I have to look them in the eye and tell them that right now, our political system is not in their favor. But I plan on making it work in your favor if elected to governor of office. How many of you desire to open up a small business or a large corporation one day? I see a couple hands, of course. In the back, nice, uh, there you go. And I'm sure, you know what, whatever business you want to open up, what will your business be, by the way? Yes? All right, I'll keep my children away from that store. <laughs> but, you know, that is the great thing about New York. Our Constitution allows you to do so. We're in Iran, you wouldn't be allowed to do such a thing. 
That's the great thing about our Constitution and about America. And you know what? Whatever your business is, whether I agree or approve of it or not, I am not someone Thank you, Mr. You Paladino. Not do that, and I will allow you to open up Thank that you. Store. Would you like to respond to my that? Community. Yes, I would. Thank oh, you. <laughs> Thank you. Look, business is a serious matter, okay? We have to be serious about the fish, fiscal issues that are plaguing New York. There's no time to joke around. There's no time to be unintelligent. We have to use our knowledge to find out solutions for these issues. Encouraging the development of new business should be our priority. These are the critical issues that we need to discuss. We need to give companies benefits to hire New Yorkers. Wouldn't you agree? We can provide a skilled workforce to these new companies that want to invest in New York. We have the best institutions. We have the best educational institutions right here in the state of New York. And I firmly believe that we will lead New York to the path of prosperity in the 21st century. Thank you, Mr. Cuomo. Our next question is to Mr. Cuomo from Mr. Mont. Mr. Cuomo, 2010 looks to be on track for a record year for tourism in New York. There were 47.5 million tourists in New York in 2010. How would you continue to make New York attractive for foreign tourists in order to continue bringing the revenue from such tourism into the state? Thank you. As you know, New York is a top tourist destination in the U.S. It's one of the top tourist destinations in the entire world. The Empire State of New York is one of the top tourist destinations and millions of tourists around the world rely on our great city. We need to continue to provide these attractions to other parts of the world. What we should do is set up offices promoting the benefits of coming to New York. Even as the US and some of the world is experiencing turmoil, New York is still viewed as the capital of the world. New York is such a beautiful place to live in. New York is such a beautiful place to work in. I want to ensure that the Empire State continues to be the top destination of the entire Thank you, world. Mr. Cuomo. Thank you. Would you like to respond to that, Mr. Yes, Palazzo? please. Thank you. My goals are to attract foreign business and tourist revenue into our, into our city. Uh, New York City, if you've walked around Times Square, which I'm sure many of you have walked in Times Square, it's difficult to walk in Times Square uh, because of the people standing there with cameras held up. All tourists bringing their euro, their durham, pound into our economy. We need to continue and strengthen this relation we have with foreign countries and to allow uh, immigrants from these countries or citizens who have lineage to these countries, the opportunity to open up businesses here in New York to attract them, to attract business relations with them. Like recently, while here, I visited Flushing. How many of you are from Flushing? Have you been to Flushing? A great Chinese community there, and Koreans too. As, as a lot of business flourishing there in Main Street. I had so much fun eating dumplings and, and, and shopping in their stores. The, the, the ginseng tea was great. Thank you, and Mr. You know Paladino. What? Many of them suffer because now, property taxes and real estate is too expensive. Another they question can't afford a spot there. Rodriguez. There's five stores in the size of one room. I want to make it affordable so where all of you can open up stores in your own separate establishment. And not only in Flushing, in Jamaica, in other parts of Queens, in New York City, even in my hometown of Buffalo. Thank you. about that. Okay, we'll take one more question from Assemblyman David Weprin. Okay, uh, I'll address it to both. I'll start with Mr. Cuomo. Uh, as you know, uh, Mr. Cuomo, the state budget is due April 1st each, each year. 
Uh, this year, uh, the budget was adopted, the final budget was adopted on August 3rd. What are you going to do as governor uh, to work with the legislature to see that we have an on-time budget? Sure, thank you very much. We need to fix the legislation. The Empire State is the best state in the nation. There is a solution, and we need to stamp out the dysfunction in order to bring out a budget that makes sense. The resilience of every single resident in this state is dependent on that budget. And I've been working very hard as your Attorney General to fix the corruption to save you tax dollars, and that's exactly what I did as Attorney General. I stamped out Medicare fraud in the state of New York to the tune of $700 million of saved taxes. You know, I've seen the abuse from the $500,000 superintendents on Long Island on double dipping, to Senator Pedro Espada, to the Comptroller's office, and Trooper Gate and the abuse there. So as you can see, I've been staring at this beast that we call corruption. We need to restore the confidence of the people. And to me, this corruption is very disgusting because I believe in the honor of state government. I believe in the honor and I believe in the integrity of state government. The people of New York should be Thank happy you, and Cuomo. proud to come and say we have an issue. Mr. Cuomo. Thank you. <clears throat> Ms. Palladino, would you like to respond? Thank you, Mr. Assemblyman, for your question. That is a very good question. And I have a very clear response to that. We will come up with a tight budget. Or else, if, if, if Governor, if I had the power, I would s shut down the state. Shut down state jobs. Everyone will have to go home. And you'll have to deal with it. Because in 60 days, uh, you couldn't come with a budget to me. I want to make sure that we are run efficiently and smoothly. Okay? I want to make sure that these career-long politicians who haven't made any change or haven't made any kind of leap towards progress from our current financial crisis remain in office. I will take a tough stance with the state legislature. I will ensure that we do not play around with your votes your taxpayer money, and that I serve you just as I served my country back in the Army, with honor, with courage, and commitment to ensuring that we are restored to our national prominence. Thank you, Mr. Palladino. Our, ne <laughs> our next and final question from our panel of journalists will be presented to Mr. Palladino from Ms. Rodriguez. Okay. Mr. Palladino. How do you propose that the Yankees and Mets be improved for next year? This well, is a serious question. <laughs> I can tell you're, uh, you're a fan. Yankees or Mets? Yankees. All right. I'm a Yankees fan, too. Now, uh, the Yankees and Mets and New York have a great principal thing in common. They spend way too much. Now, I would cut spending with the Mets and Yankees because having the largest payroll in the major league and losing to Cliff Lee and the Rangers is not good enough. So we will pursue free agency with the same mentality that Billy Bean did in Oakland and to ensure with a low budget similar to the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, I mean, excuse me, the Rays now, but whatever, we're still better than them, <laughs> go Yankees. We will attain success and bring that parade back to New York City and stimulate our economy in that way. So. I'm all about ensuring our economic prosperity and the winning of the Yankees to our 28th title. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Palladino. Mr. Cuomo, would you like to respond? Yes, I would. Thank you. Look, I'm a New Yorker first and foremost. Believe it or not, I was born and raised in Queens. And I am for the people, but most importantly, for the development of the sports and entertainment industry in New York. This, believe it or not, is not a game. It may be a game of politics, but this is a serious game that will affect you as a taxpayer. You know, I'm very proud of both teams on their stellar performance, the Yankees and the Mets. You know, and I look forward to the continuing development of the sports industry 
and New York will be the number one destination for sports and entertainment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cuomo. At this time, the candidates will answer questions from the audience. Please raise your hand if you have any questions, and Adriana Barnes will come by. State your name. Uh, Joseph Atanasio. Okay, we're gonna direct the first question to both candidates. Okay, I wanna know what your views on gay rights are and how you're gonna help the gay community of New York get equal rights. Starting with Mr. Cuomo. Sure, thank you very much for the question. Look, now New York is a very diverse place. I'm not gonna dance around this issue. I am in full support of the gay and lesbian community in New York. New York is a very diverse place and we have to respect that fact, you know? Thank you. Uh, may I respond Mr. to that? Paul, Mr. Paladino, I'm sorry. Uh, recently, uh, there were uh, this news about me making anti-gay remarks at a uh, Jewish Orthodox synagogue. And uh, I just wanted to reiterate that these uh, statements were written and that I didn't get a chance to review them before I spoke them. So my stance is the same as Mr. Obama's. Now, wh whether I approve of it or not, doesn't diminish the fact that you have the same rights as every other citizen here in the United States. And that's where I stand. Hey, excuse me just I'm one sorry, minute. I'm sorry, let him finish answering. Could we, what was that? Could we just, could we just break into one second? Assembly okay. Weprin has to uh, leave, but he just wanted to make a couple concluding remarks. Thank you. I enjoyed this debate very much, and um, I, I wish the debate that they had uh, at Hofstra with the five uh, can or six candidates uh, was uh, as informative. There's no question that um, both uh, candidates were very much in character and on message, uh, regardless of the question, as we often, as elected officials often are, focused or, or on uh, what we want to say as opposed to specifically answering the question. So, I mean, that, that could be bad, but that um, for purposes of this and uh, staying on message and um, I, I assume you were stating the positions of your candidates as opposed to your own personal position. So I want to uh, praise both candidates um, for their ter ter terrific performance uh, and in particular, staying on message and in character. Thank you. Okay, state your name. Farshita Rouhani. And your question will be directed to both candidates. Yes. Uh, Mr. Palladino and Mr. Cuomo, you both say New York is a diverse state that brings many cultures and ethnicities together. What are your views on the proposed Islamic Center being built downtown? Starting with Mr. Palladino. Now, I believe that the World Trade Center site the 9-11 site is a sacred site, honoring the lives of those fallen, the heroes, the 3,000 victims. And, 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 and frankly, this region should be dedicated to their memorial. I, I strongly, strongly support freedom to express your religion, to practice whatever religion you decide to. I am not gonna stand up here and say you should not practice this religion or this religion. My opinion doesn't matter. Your connection and relationship with God is that of your own. It's personal. But I believe that this, this site should be commemorating those victims, those lives lost. Because many lives of New Yorkers and others were lost. And they deserve this at least, a memorial for them at that site. Thank you, Mr. Palatino. Mr. Cuomo? Sure, thank you. Look, I'm going to be honest here. This is certainly a very, very touchy subject. Although I am for freedom of expression, I am also for the freedom of expressing your own religion. I respect every single religion that's in this room, and that's what that's what's makes New York beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. 
Our next question is directed to Mr. Palladino. State your name. Uh, George Navarro. Um, you seem a bit confused on uh, your standings on immigration. You said at one point that you were strongly against illegal immigration in the state, and then another time you said that you were welcoming, welcoming illegal immigrants to open businesses in New York as well. Yes, clarify, please. All right. No, you Mr. Did, you Palladino. Did. Thank you. Good, good, good question. Now, I do welcome immigrants, but I didn't say illegal. I said foreign. Immigration, yes, we want to bring them here. Their money is good. Money has no race, has no status, but if in a legal manner, I'm sorry, my hands are clean. I'm not corrupt like my opponent here, <laughs> accepting dirty money. And that money will be managed in a wise and sound manner. But yes, we do want immigrants to come here. We are, we are all immigrants. My father was an immigrant coming to this country. So yes, I'm for that, but legally and with the Constitution as I was taught in law school. Great question, though. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Palatino. Okay, our next question is directed to both candidates. State your name. How you doing? My name is Sean Bino. Um, the question I had is, uh, both of y'all said about giving $3,000 to businesses who hire unemployment, unemployed people. I want to know where, the, where, where will that money come from? And also, also um, about cutting government spending, wouldn't that affect the GDP? Okay, starting with Mr. Cuomo. Sure, thank you. You know, New York is a very entrepreneurial state. It's also a very entrepreneurial city. Queens, Manhattan, there's a lot of entrepreneurs here with a lot of very, very inspiring ideas. You know, New York is the capital of the world in the finance industry. We have Wall Street a couple of miles away from where we are now. With the $3,000 credit with regards to that, we will basically set up a platform with Wall Street as a conduit, and we will help raise these funds. It has to be done somehow, but I am strongly against increasing taxes to handle this matter. But again, it's a very great question. We have to think outside of the box. Wall Street is in our neighborhood. It's in our backyard. We should tap this in infrastructure to raise money for the entrepreneurs, the great minds in this city and in this state. And that's exactly what I'm going to do when you elect me for governor. Thank you, thank Mr. You. Cuomo. Mr. Paladino. All right, thank you, Sean, for that question. Uh, are you a business major? Yes. I could tell. <laughs> Going at GDP questions. So I'm glad you asked that. Uh, now you mentioned cutting spending, if that will affect the GDP. Uh, no, because the spending I'll be cutting is the unnecessary spending, like in Medicare and Medicaid, the highest spending in the nation. And then you turn on the news or you go onto the Yahoo homepage or MSN homepage and you see this $163 million fraud taking place with these thugs taking your money, your money, your money, my money for their own purpose, illegally. This is spending I'll cut, and I'll make sure that it's managed wisely. Because when your money's put out there, you work hard for that money, don't you, Sean? As is everyone else over here. You want to make sure that money's in good hands. It is not right now. That will not affect our GDP in a negative manner. I'm looking to improve our GDP as I've improved my personal wealth. So yes, you're very right on that issue. Spending cuts need to be made, but Thank in an appropriate Pal manner. Thank you, Mr. Palazzino. We have one Sean. last Thank question. You from the audience is directed at both candidates. Hello. State your name. Okay. Um, Ashma Aziz, and I want one question for both of you guys is, um, how do you feel about abortion? Starting with Mr. Palladino. You had to go there. <laughs> um, any other question you want to ask or are you considering? Sure, if it'll make you happy. <laughs> well, you know. Okay, I'm, I'm from Astoria, and it's also known as Asthma Alley because of all the factories. So how will you change that? Uh, now, uh, I'm, I'm sort of familiar with Astoria. I know we have uh, Long Island cities nearby, a lot of factories there for business for New York because, frankly, there is no space in New York City for all those factories. So Astoria, Long Island City gets hit up with those uh, spaces. Now, uh, m what I'm opposed to is when the income of business revenue affects your personal health. Because it makes no sense to bring in this money, yet hurt the people who do help bring that money in. Because if you're sick, how can you go to work? 
And if you can't go to work, how can we continue to bring in that revenue? So yes, I will make sure we make strides in, in, in fixing this problem. Because we don't want to have our kids having asthma, having problems in the park, playing when they're wheezing. And for you not to be able to drive down listening to your Lady Gaga in the car and call your windows closed. No, no, I'll work for you to make sure your windows are down and you're blasting your music loud. Thank you, Mr. Palazzino. Mr. Cuomo, would you yes, like to respond? You. I would definitely love to. Going back to abortion, you know, I'm not a person who's going to avoid serious issues. This is a serious issue, and I do respect a female's right to choose. After all, it is their right. Regarding uh, Astoria, look, Long Island City and Astoria are right on the waterfront. There are a lot of opportunities for businesses, a lot of opportunities for people in the real estate business to develop structures, buildings on the waterfront. But that does come at a cost. It comes at a cost of your well-being. It comes, of a comes at a cost to your neighbors. And we have to develop a structure that's smart, that's intelligent. Thank you, Mr. Thank Cuomo. You. We are now going to make the closing statement. Since Mr. Palladino made the opening statement, Mr. Cuomo, would you like to make your closing statement? Yes, I would. Thank you. First of all, I just wanted to thank the administration and the faculty and the wonderful students of Queensborough Community College today. I want to recognize that we are in very tough times right now, and it's not going to be short. We need to take dramatic action, and the time is now. But we also have seen tough times in the past. This state is a beautiful state. We have weathered so many issues, and yet we have bounced back. We have faced many challenges, and I do understand this, and we have to overcome these challenges. I believe in public service, and I believe in the capacity of the public. After all, it is you. The opportunity is with you. And I believe in the capacity of government under the right leadership. And most importantly, I believe in the talent. I believe in the compassion. I believe in the entrepreneurial spirit of the people in this room. And we have to respect that. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Cuomo. Mr. Paladino, would you please make a closing statement? Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming today and sitting in those uncomfortable chairs for an hour. Um, Two hours. Two hours. It flew by for me. Well, uh, before this uh, looming day of November 2nd comes upon us, I'd like to leave you with a couple facts. Fact, Stephen Ratner was given immunity from criminal action in the pension fund kickback scandal. Fact, Andrew Cuomo accused Pedro Espada of siphoning money from a charity. A crime, that is. Especially reprehensible, yet there is no criminal action pending against Senator Esposada. Only a civil action that would entail no jail time. Fact, Assemblyman Vito Lopez has stolen million, millions in public funds. No action taken against him. Why? Because that's his good friend. Fact, Andrew Farkas was caught stealing $7.6 million from HUD. That is the same person who donated to his campaign. Cuomo called Farkas a slumlord, said the action against him was the biggest in HUD. And no actions were taken. Can you please no that. actions. November 2nd, when you approach that booth. Thank you, Mr. Powell. No, I will provide that action you need. Thank you. And that concludes our debate. Thank you, and please consider closely to what you've heard today, and vote. We could we say something real quick? Out of character, us two. Yo, just stand from Austin. So now. Uh, hey, thanks guys for coming. Uh, obviously, I'm not Carol Palladino. I'm not Andrew Cuomo, even though I would love to be. Yeah, I'm not that angry. I can't do it, because I really have a headache right now. 
a class, but uh, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, session here. Of course, we definitely did. You know, we learned a lot. We definitely learned a lot of serious issues. And, uh, and real talk, I want to tell you guys this. Tuesday's coming up. You guys have the power, if you register to vote, to go out and vote. Now, whatever we told you today, could it be truth, could it be lies? Don't believe what we said. Research the educational facts, and you come up with your own decision, because you have that power to do so. So go out and vote, okay, guys? Thank you very much. That's all right. Now I'd like to introduce, this on? Now I'd like to introduce the people who participated today. Um, Elizabeth, Lara, Lynn Young, Maria Rodriguez, Manny D Deer, and Ong Wan. And of course, Professor Rosen, Professor Woo! Hamill, and Jenna Barnes. Yeah. Our candidates, Mr. Cuomo, Sam Mistra, Aldino as Garo Vardavadia, <laughs> and our faculty advisors, Professor Angela Policaris of the International <laughs> Business Club, <laughs> Professors Ste Stephen Hamill and Ted <laughs> Rosen of the Mock Child Association. We'd also like to thank our co-sponsors, uh, the Business Academy, Anna Schneider, Natalie Rupchan, wow. and Jean Nayar. Can we go eat now or? <laughs> I'm starving. I'd also like to thank <laughs> the African American Students Association, and we are well, I'm William Janik. Helen Croft. Woo! Helen! And please feel free to join us for a reception right outside. Cookies! <laughs> Cookies. <laughs>